ghosts are real. This much I know. What do you be buying? Take a little walk to the edge of town. Go across the track. Edith, this is my sister. There are parts of the house that are unsafe. This secret confined to the nursery in the attic. On a gathering storm comes a tall handsome man with a red ride. In your own best interest, proceed with caution. Has anyone died in this house? Specific deaths, violent deaths. I have to leave. There's nowhere else to go. This is your home now. Holy crap! It's Victorian Gothic Fifty Shades of Grey! Now, I know some of you will be instantly appalled by that comparison and saying, Grace, you've just gone too far. S-M-H. But trust me, I can back this comparison up. Because think about it. We begin our story with a quote-unquote ordinary young woman catching the eye of the most eligible bachelor in town. He's ridiculously hot, he's ridiculously rich, and every other single woman wants to land him. But there's something dark and mysterious about him. Also, when he first meets our protagonist, he says he wants to make her mine. And that's a direct quote from both movies, underscoring the fine line between mine in the romantic sense and mine in the possessive sense. Then, this young woman is taken to this gentleman's luxurious home where something strange is going on inside that he's surprisingly upfront about. In this case, it's a literally and obviously haunted home, which also happens to house his sister with who he clearly has an incestuous relationship. It might be one-sided, but it's so out there that he has to know what's going on. But yet, our young woman stays, not only because he's again ridiculously hot and ridiculously rich, but there's the promise of hot sex, as we see glimpsed here in a quick shot with Tom Hiddleston. Now, the reason these two are so similar, it's not like Guillermo del Toro read Fifty Shades of Grey and was like, I must make my own version. Instead, both uh, Guillermo del Toro's story and E.L. James's are based on old-time famous, you know, gothic romances. Why would Jane Eyre stay in the house? Why would the female lead in Rebecca stay in the house? It's all for the same reason. Uh, there, you know, you could say it's partially because of love, but because they want to land the most eligible bachelor in town, and they're, they're going to stick it out. So while I'm not into BDSM, so I was pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed Fifty Shades of Grey, I did not think that I would going in. I'm super into ghost stories, so I know I'm going to like Crimson Peak. And where the trailer really won me over was when that ghost came crawling out of the floor. I'm sure everybody knows the moment I'm talking about because I'm sure a lot of you out there, like myself, really loved these kind of ghost stories. Um, you know, really simple ghost stories, but, uh, you know, I'm saying they're not like, you know, things like Hostel or Saw, but these, you know, really enchanting ghost stories that I think are very popular in the young adult market. I used to read those books so much when I was growing up that I remember reading them during breaks in class and then being so engrossed in what I was reading, I had no idea that class had started again. Well, Guillermo del Toro has brought those stories to life. And that's what excites me about this movie, the supernatural elements, and that he's just going full tilt with gothic horror and romance that I think we haven't seen a movie do yet. Now, one of the interesting things that I've seen a lot of people comment on is the choice of lighting. And it is indeed very bizarre for this type of movie to be so well lit. Uh, usually there's lots of play with shadows, etc. I mean, The Shining, uh, also taking place in a singular home, which is haunted, uh, had very good lighting. But that was supposed to be a very realistic setting. Uh, and, you know, I think it was supposed to juxtapose, you know, just a, a normal story about a family with something 
that was haunted. But the thing with Crimson Peak is that it's so highly stylized, you expect it to use really dramatic lighting. But as I've seen a few people point out, it's almost like soap opera lighting. You can see everything. Like that's called three point lighting. Now, I think the reason Guillermo del Toro has done this is because he's put so much work into the production design and the special effects that he wants to make sure you see everything. He's like, I don't need to put anything in the shadows because everything's worth seeing. And it's an it's a interesting and risky choice because one of the best things about horror films is that they allow you to play tricks on your mind and for your imagination to run wild. Like, what is in the shadow? What can't I fully see? And when you can fully see it, well, then you better deliver on what you people can fully see. And I think the exciting thing is, is that so far, at least from this trailer, it looks like Guillermo del Toro is delivering. What he can show me is as good, if not better, than what I can imagine. So I'm very impressed. I think it's no accident that this trailer debuted the same weekend as Fifty Shades of Grey to play in front of it. Uh, and they're from the same studio. And it'll be curious to see if Crimson Peak can be as successful as Fifty Shades of Grey, which of course is extremely successful, as you'll find out on Movie Math, which airs on Tuesday this week because it's a holiday weekend. But I, I suspect this will be a big Halloween hit. At least I hope it will be. And it looks like a movie that I just can't wait to see. Although I don't know if I can wait for Halloween to watch it. All right. Thank you so much for tuning into my review. I'm very excited to discuss with this with you down below. And you can check out some other episodes right now.